Hello and welcome to the new Retrolog 2. In this video, I will show you how we can get from here to here. Don't worry if you haven't programmed a synthesizer before, I will explain each step along the way. Let's have a look at the Retrolog 2. We are on the first page, the synthesizer page, and on the left hand side we see section number one, which is the oscillator section. And as you can see, we have three oscillators available, which is one more than we had in the old Retrolog. We also have a sub oscillator, a noise generator, and you can mix all those different oscillators together. The second section is the filter section. This is where we can filter the sounds coming from the oscillators. We, for example, have a cutoff parameter to set the frequency of the filter. And this can be a static or a fixed value, or we can have it change over time. For example, using the envelope just below it. Or we can also use LFOs, which I will explain a little bit later. The third fundamental section of the synthesizer is the amplifier section. This is where you can set the overall volume envelope of the sound. So for example for a pet sound you want to have a longer attack and a longer release. We have included a lot of presets with the Retrolog 2. Feel free to browse through all of them. If you are looking for a specific category of sound, for example, a bass sound, you can also enable filters to only have a look at bass sounds available. As part of this tutorial, however, I would like to show you how you can make your own sound using the Retrolog 2. Right now we only have one oscillator playing. Oscillator 1, it's set to play a sawtooth wave. Doesn't sound very impressive, I admit but we'll change that. The first thing I'm going to do is switch the type of oscillator to XOR. And XOR is short for exclusive OR. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go into detail how this actually works, but let me tell you this. It creates interesting harmonics. Let's listen to the sound again. Let me also change the wave shape as I hold a note. Alright, we have more than one oscillator, so let's make use of them. I'm going to enable oscillator 2. And for the type, this time I'm going to choose multi. Which allows me to play actually multiple oscillators with oscillator 2. I'm going to set it to 8. And also slightly detune the individual oscillators. I am actually going to set it to 2 cent. Now I'm still not happy with the sound, so let's turn on oscillator 3. For this one, I will choose a sine wave and set the oscillator type to sync. Now another thing I want to do is make use of the sub-oscillator. The sub-oscillator is always playing one octave below the pitch you play on the keyboard. I turned the volume about halfway down. I want to make sure that every time I trigger a note it actually starts with a fixed phase. So I'm going to select fixed phase for oscillator 1 at zero degrees and oscillator three, I'm going to set to 180 degrees. This is also useful, for example, if you're making bass drum sounds or bass sounds. I'm also going to set the synthesizer to mono so I can only play one pitch at a time. I will also enable re-trigger so if I press and hold a key, play a second key and let go of the second key, then automatically the first key will be re-triggered.
Last but not least, I will enable Glide. And you might also know this as Portamento. This is a time value defining how long it will take to get from one pitch to the next one. Okay, that's it for now. Make sure to also have a look at the new distortion options we have. For example, bit reduction, you'll find them in the filter section. In the next video, we will have a look at the modulators and the arpeggiator page.